What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the Strava API. So in the last video, we took a look at the GitHub API and this is what we did. So in this video, we're going to continue our dashboard project and look at Strava. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is come to the Strava uh, developer settings and create an API application. Once you have that, you can go ahead and grab your access token. Now note that this token will expire. Um, so this is not good to use in production, uh, but for testing purposes and for this dashboard example purpose, it is completely fine. So first off, go ahead and go into your .env file and create a Strava key. And then paste your key here. Okay, next we're going to close out of all of these GitHub files. And let's go ahead and create a strava.js file in our API directory. We'll do what we've been doing. We'll say export default async request response. So let's go ahead and grab our key. So we'll say var key is equal to process.env dot strava underscore key. Now we'll say const response is equal to await fetch and the URL that we will be fetching is https colon slash slash strava dot com slash api slash v3 slash athletes and then I'm getting my own data, so I'm saying slash eight six nine six eight three six, and that is my athlete ID. If you go to your profile in the URL, you will find that slash stats. I'm going to pass in my access uh, token just like that, and that will be equal to the key. So we'll add the key in there. Okay, perfect. Then we'll say const JSON is equal to await response dot JSON. Whoops. Okay, just like that. And then we can say const, and here are the variables that we want. We want count of runs and the total distance. And that will be equal to JSON all run totals. And how I'm getting this is that if you take a look at the response that this gives us, if we go here and we look up Strava API, if we go to the, this activities right here. So this will show you the API reference. So we are fetching the athlete stats right here. This is our request slash athlete, athletes slash ID slash stats. That's what we're getting here, athletes ID stats. And this is the response that we get. So I am getting the count of runs and the distance from all run totals. And you can see that is right here. Okay, so that's that. We also want the moving time. So that will be const moving time equals json dot all run totals dot moving underscore time and then we'll simply return that so res slash status of 200 dot json just like that and then pass in all of our variables so count distance and moving time okay there we go so now let's go ahead and in our components, create a new folder. We will call this folder Strava. And then in here, we need a new file for uh, count. Uh, uh, sorry, we'll say run count.js total distance.js. 
And the last one is moving time. Okay, just like that. So now we have our three components. And we will start with uh, moving time, or I guess this is the total elapsed time. So we need to import these things we've been importing. So I'm just going to come here and copy this for now. Okay, so we got our React, our SWR, our Fetcher, and our Bootstrap card. And we'll say const moving time is equal to nice little arrow notation. We'll export that at the bottom. And then inside of here, let's say const data error. That is equal to use SWR, pass in our API, so slash API slash Strava, and pass in our fetcher. Oops. Fetcher right there. And now we need to grab the time. So let's declare a variable time. And this is equal to, remember, we have data dot moving time. That should not be capitalized, that should be lowercase. There we go. So that's the time. However, if you go to the documentation, you'll notice that this time, I believe it's in seconds. So we need to convert that to hours. So how we're going to do this is we can say data.movingTime times that by 0.0002. Two seven 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 eight, and we want this to be formatted as well. So let's wrap that in parentheses and say dot two fixed. We can say two decimal places. Okay, so that should convert from seconds to hours, and then we can just return. A div, put our bootstrap card. I'm going to copy the styling we've been using, so let me just copy this. Okay, there we go. So this title is elapsed time, and the value we want is moving time. Okay, just like that. So that's it for this first card. Let me copy this and paste it in for run count as well. Rename you to run count. There we go. We'll say total runs. And let's get rid of that variable. So getting the total runs is straightforward. We don't need to do any calculations or any formatting, so we're just going to say const count is equal to data question mark dot count, and then just pass in the count here, and that should be it. Okay, that was pretty easy. Now let's copy this and move on to the total distance. Now here we will have to do some calculations, so let's remove these, change this to total distance, Okay, there we go, total distance. So for the total distance, we can say const distance, so that will be our variable, pass that in here. That will be equal to data dot distance, but the distance is in meters. So we need to convert this to miles. So we'll just times that by 0 0.0006213713. And then again, we want to format that to two decimal places. So we will use two fixed, pass in two. And that should be it for the total distance. So here are our three components. And what we're going to do is, and back in the index, we need to get all of these. So we'll say import 
moving time from components slash Strava slash moving time. And we need two more of those. Now let us come down here, create a new row. And we need moving time, run count, and total distance, just like that. So this should be good now. So when we run this with the yarn dev and refresh, everything should be working. OK, so moving time is not defined. Probably just forgot to change the variable. Yes, I did. Time, let's make sure the rest of them are good. Count and distance. OK, there we go. So everything is coming through. We have our elapsed time in hours. We have our total runs. And then we have our total distance in miles. So this is it, guys. This is the completed dashboard. So I hope you were able to understand how to interact with the Strava API in JavaScript and just in Next.js as well. So in the next video, continue on with the series, we are going to take this dashboard and deploy it to uh, Versal. So we're going to take this dashboard, which is hosted in our GitHub repo, and sync that up to Versal and deploy it for free. And I'm going to also show you how to add API keys through that so that the data can be fetched and the API keys are safe and secure on the web. So thanks for watching. As always, if you enjoyed, please give the video a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you.